Hello everyone, this is TechBizmo, and welcome back once again to another video. Now today I have here an HP Omni 220 PC. Now this computer was released sometime in late 2011, and I have done something spectacular to it. That's right, I cut a hole in the back of it, made it look super ugly, and I mounted an Intel stock heatsink right on that CPU, on that i5-2400S CPU. And let me tell you a little bit about it. So my family purchased this back in what, like December of 2011, I think we got it. And uh, this thing is old. This thing is nine years old at this point. Well, nearly nine years old at this point. And it is still going like brand new, except of course that the old the, the stock heatsink that this computer had shipped with was completely terrible. Um, the temperatures we were getting originally were like, I don't know, something around 80 degrees Celsius without use. So that's terrible. Now with this Intel stock heatsink, we actually get somewhere around, I think in the 40s or 50 degrees uh, when we're under load. So that is pretty amazing. Now you can see some benchmarks up here of the different temperatures um, that I had received on this desktop. Now, yeah, it's it's a pretty significant difference as you could see. Um, but yeah, this thing is still completely functional. This thing is, as I said, nine years old at this point, almost nine years old at this point, and it is still completely functional. So um, I actually want to just open this up and I guess show you the inside. So I don't have an overhead camera so it will be a little bit difficult to show you guys the internals but I can kind of show you how I did it here. Um, I actually just took the default uh, I just took the default fan and kind of stripped the wires a little bit so I could solder another set of wires you know, that goes to another heat sink directly onto the original, uh, the original cooler. So here we have the bottom cover. I'm going to remove this, uh, inform this sticker right here. I mean, you can't really read the information on it anyway. Uh, I will be removing that soon, probably right after this video. And then I'll just put some electrical tape or something around these, uh, these edges because you can see where I drummeled it. <laughs> You know, there's some melted plastic on the edges. You guys might not even be able to see that. But, uh, yeah. So the back cover is exactly the same, except there's just a big old hole in it. Now, one thing that's not the same with what I've done here is that there is usually a metal shield covering the components of the motherboard. And I'll actually go retrieve that really quickly so I can show you what I'm talking about. So yes, originally this guy actually came right on the motherboard. So it would be this over the motherboard as well as the heatsink and the fan. It would just sit right there. But it no longer fits with the Intel heatsink that I've stuck on there. Um, you can actually see you know, how this fits in. <laughs> the ports just line up perfectly. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, so once again, I had to cut a hole in the back of that because of this heat sink. And this is not my permanent choice of heat sink because I'm planning to put something more overkill on this in the future because this is not the only video that I'm going to be making on my HP Omni over here. Uh, I'm certainly going to be making uh, some follow-up videos with this computer because I want to upgrade the the uh, CPU as well as the MXM graphics card here because this could definitely, these components definitely could use some upgrading. Um, and then RAM is really no problem because uh, I have uh, eight gigabyte sticks laying around just around my room. I mean, I'm sure if I pull that shelf back, I'll find a couple uh, dims. Uh, but yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, RAM is no problem because with if I upgrade the the processor in this guy, which currently it's a i5-2400S, now that's not terrible, but it actually 
this is the only damaged component and that is not due to usage over time it's because i dropped the cpu and it no longer recognizes one of these dims one of the dim slots uh, so currently i'm i'm only able to run at single channel memory which is okay because i was planning to upgrade that uh, cpu sometime in the near future anyway probably actually sometime this month or next month uh, if I sell another computer because I'm running out of money. No, don't worry about me. Um, but yeah, once again, these two components could really just use some upgrades. I actually did replace the Wi-Fi card already because um, it was running at, uh, what is it, single band? <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called. Now this is a dual band Wi-Fi card, so I get the 5 gigahertz uh, network. Uh, band so uh, you can actually see might actually have to disassemble this further to Show you guys what I've done with the the heatsink connectors Well, anyways while I am disassembling this computer. Let's talk a little bit about um, Where this computer was like the type of environment this computer has been in for many years um, so my father purchased this as I said sometime late 2011 and that's around the time when I got my first computer as well um, now I filmed so many videos as a kid playing on this computer just doing random stuff on this computer like how to access YouTube just stuff like that uh, how to look up cat videos seriously just little small stuff like that um, but yeah this computer was downstairs in the office the family office of course and my brother would always download viruses on here. So I think that's what like basically killed the the heatsink. Now, of course, I'm not serious, but he overworked this computer more than anybody because he would download so many like Minecraft mod packs and stuff. It's pretty funny. All right, I think I have pretty much the best access I'm going to get to the, the heatsink now. So you guys can uh, see how I've done this here. I don't know. You still can't. <laughs> you, st you still can't. While I'm pulling this heatsink off, or this fan off, because I'm not pulling the heatsink off, I'm pulling the fan off. I can, I can just tell you. So I literally just took, I just stripped the wires off the original fan and soldered the new fans wires right onto the old fan and you electrical engineers out there may be saying that's a bad idea because the the voltage is going to be split in half or the current is going to be split in half and to that I say you're probably right I actually haven't gotten a multimeter and tested the the voltages on here because this only has one uh, CPU fan header um, I wasn't able to just stick it on another another fan header essentially um, so I actually had to strip the wires and solder the fans together as you can see here um, but since it's basically being cooled two ways now there's two fans even if the current or voltage is split in half or in fourths which why the heck would it be split in fourths then I'm still going to be getting adequate cooling because of the two fans that I have on this uh, computer. You can just see how I've done it here. I don't want to pull that Intel heatsink off because I've got a nice application of thermal compound. Uh, you can see I've simply just wired these connections together. I simply just electrical taped them to cover the contacts so we don't have any shorts. Yeah, it's 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 that simple. That's pretty much all I did with this this computer. I just took the original heat pipe you can actually see you can actually see the original heatsink for the uh, CPU here where the heat pipes are supposed to be going from here onto the integrated heat spreader now this is a terrible design um, it actually does cool the um, the graphics processor pretty well um, and the way I actually had this is I, since I kept the original fan and the original heat pipe for the graphics card, uh, we still get the same... I'm dropping everything today. We still get the same uh, cooling that we got when we had the original 
CPU heat pipe. So nothing has changed in terms of cooling for the uh, graphics processor. It's exactly the same as it was um, when it shipped or when HP designed it, when HP manufactured it. But yeah, honestly, I think this is the way that HP should have done it in the first place. And uh, that, and the reason why is because you get so much benefit in terms of cooling when the cooler is directly on contact with the IHS. If there's a heat pipe going from here, that doesn't even like that doesn't even compare to something like a standard desktop cooler. This is cooling a desktop CPU with a laptop heat pipe, pretty much, because since laptop CPUs generally consume a lower wattage rating than desktop CPUs, um, you know, you're not going to get any problems cooling this way on a laptop CPU because it's a laptop CPU. The wattage is much, much lower than the TDPs of these desktop chips. Okay, so what I'm trying to get across is that desktop CPUs are generally a higher wattage than laptop CPUs, and therefore, with the higher wattage results in a higher temperature. So yes, the higher the wattage, the higher the temperatures you will be getting in a standard desktop CPU. Um, now, with that HP Omni 220 uh, heatsink, that, uh, that cooler, um, the reason why you'd be able to cool a laptop CPU rather than just a desktop CPU with that heatsink is because of that, uh, that lower wattage rating with laptops and, you know, therefore the, the, um, the lower temperature output. So, uh, yeah, that was just to clear up any confusion because I know that part of the video wasn't, uh, wasn't super clear for you guys to understand, but uh, hopefully you guys understand it a little bit better now. Really, HP should have just gone with their own sort of right on contact uh, CPU cooler design. Um, even if it, even if we're sacrificing the design, the you know physical appearance of the desktop for performance and for cooling, because I would certainly rather have a cooler and faster performing CPU rather than a pretty computer that doesn't perform well at all. Yep, those are just my thoughts, and this is basically just what I've done with my HP Omni 220 PC. As I said, this is not the end of seeing the HP Omni 220 PC. There are certainly going to be more videos of, uh, about this, uh, this desktop, and the reason why is because this thing is still pretty upgradable. Like, I can throw any LGA 1155 CPU in there. Now, of course, every time I boot up the system, I'll be getting an error that'll say, incompatible CPU, because this motherboard was not designed for those CPUs. But as long as I get a CPU of similar wattage ratings, then it will not damage the motherboard. And the CPU cooler that I've chosen should be enough to cool, I don't know, a third generation i7 CPU. Uh, because, yeah, this is a second generation i5. This is i5 2400S. And, yeah, that's not a very powerful CPU. It was definitely powerful the time it came out, but in 2020, it's really not that powerful. For Cinebench R20, we actually get somewhere around the 700 range. So, as you would expect, that's not very powerful. Like, the, the computer that I am currently using right now really isn't that powerful. It's an HP Envy X360. Um, it's got an i5-8265U CPU, and it's really not that powerful either. So, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, let's just throw this, uh, cooler back in the desktop, and that'll pretty much wrap up our video. <laughs> hate this bracket. This is like the VESA mount bracket where you can actually pop off, pop off the back of the, uh, the case and expose a VESA mount where this can actually be mounted to the wall, which is kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that in the future. We'll just see. We'll see how that goes. You can actually see we've got the uh, cage for a three and a half inch drive here. Um, so this is actually just slides into the SATA drive bay right here like that and then it's just mounted down with a screw of course you have to mount it properly in order to please your OCD so yeah now that that's mounted properly uh, it's actually kind of cool it's got a nice little handle <laughs> um, 
There actually was a solid state drive I had in here a few days ago. However, I used that in the uh, M.2 versus M.2 SATA versus SATA video. Um, so I will be putting that SSD back in here later. But for now, let's just throw back on the back cover. All right, now that we have this guy reassembled, let's talk technical specifications. So right now, as I said, we have an i5-2400S CPU, and that's clocked somewhere around, I think, 2.4 gigahertz with a turbo of like 2.9 gigahertz. I'm not sure you guys can see it on the screen now. Um, currently, eight gigabytes of RAM, and then the MXM card that we have in here installed by default is, it's, it's like a AMD Radeon 6450. I believe I'll correct myself if I'm wrong I'm probably wrong now let's talk about the LCD so this LCD doesn't get that bright it's somewhere around the neighborhood of like 350 nits or something <laughs> um, the the uh, resolution actually isn't too bad it's a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution uh, but I would like to point out this is just a TN panel this is not an IPS LCD display uh, it's just simply a TN uh, panel uh, the 1920 by 1080 resolution isn't that bad, uh, but it really doesn't look that great on a panel this big. So I would, you know, in 2020, I would like to see something around a 2560 by 1440 uh, LCD display, uh, IPS LCD display, that is. Uh, because, you know, this display isn't really too special in 2020, but back in 2011, ooh, this thing was amazing. Um, I just really do like this computer. It's just a really nice design, uh, especially with like the USBs and just all that sort of stuff. We actually do have an, a uh, Windows tuner, a TV tuner here, so you can actually stick a cable antenna or a satellite uh, DVR box in here. You can't shove it in the back of the desktop. By what I mean is that you can watch TV on here through cable or antenna or satellite. Well guys, it has come towards the end of this video now. Thank you guys very, very much for watching this video. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. That is youtube.com slash techbizmo. Thanks for watching guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one.